All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make a patch in an aluminum coil. And this is actually gonna be the first time that I even attempt to do this within the fin stock on a coil, but I don't see any reason why it should be difficult using the alloy saw rod and the alloy saw flux from solder weld, um, which comes in their new kit that has the, all the different solders that you're gonna need, solders and, and uh, brazing alloys that you're gonna need for air conditioning and refrigeration application. But I wanna show you from a real practical standpoint, we do get holes inside of aluminum coils from time to time, both evaporators and condensers. Uh, Microchannel coils are made of aluminum. And in a lot of cases, we need to make a patch, um, whether it's just to get a temporary operation or whether it's because we wanna make a permanent repair. And I'm gonna show you how to do this with this rod. It's very easy, but the technique is a little different than what you're probably used to. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is we need to flow nitrogen through this coil in order to keep carbon from building up when we are brazing. When I am working with the alloy saw, you're probably not gonna get hot enough for you to actually build up any carbon. I still like to do it as just a habit because when you purge nitrogen through and then you flow it, it just helps displace anything from coming into the system. It's gonna make it less likely that you get contaminants in the system. Just a good practice. I know a lot of people say you don't need to do it and I understand that. But the first thing I need to do is cut this off so that way I can actually flow through because you can't pressurize with nitrogen. A neat little trick is you can use either one of these cup brushes like I've got here on a drill, or you can use a, uh, a round brush to clean up copper. It makes it a lot quicker. I've seen guys do this before, but Eric Melly does it all the time and it is actually really nice. Cut a piece of copper on a compressor or cut out a line dryer or whatever you're gonna cut out. It's just nice to pre-clean it so that way when you cut it, you're all ready to go. And it's a heck of a lot easier than using emery cloth, sand cloth, whatever you wanna call it. So there you go. Cut this off, cut it out, as my mother used to always tell me. She's yelling at me. Just kidding, my mother would never yell at me. That wouldn't be nice. That's cut in half. Now we're gonna take our nitrogen and we're going to flow it through this coil. Whenever I flow nitrogen, I just wanna make sure that it's coming out the other end at a very slow rate where you can just hear it when you put it up against your ear. And actually, in this case, because we got a decent amount of volume here, I'm gonna purge through. I'm gonna put it up into the purge zone first. It's going through the metering device still, so it's a... Now we're gonna put it back into the flowing nitrogen zone. It's just barely putting out any. Yep, barely hear it coming out. Okay, now we're in good shape. All right, so now I'm gonna make a hole in the coil, which is gonna try to replicate a rub out, which, you know, is tricky to do, but um, I'm just gonna take an, an awl, whack it into one of these tubes. I mean, I've done it on the U-bends, I've done it all over the place on these coils, but we're gonna just do one right here, right in the center of the coil. Got a little piece there. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about getting the fins away from here. And in some cases, guys will just say melt them away, but they can kind of get in the way a little bit. So I like to take either a flat blade screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and just kind of work them away from the area that we're gonna be working just a little bit. So there's our hole. All right, so you can do this with an oxyacetylene torch. You just have to you know, use a really soft flame and hold it back a ways. I prefer to use a small tip on a turbo torch aracetylene. This is a number three tip. And this is about perfect for what we're gonna be doing here. I'm using the Alloy Sol product on this. Alloy Sol is a low temperature rod and it works best on thin aluminum. Alloy Braze also works, but you have to be a lot more careful. And with thin aluminum, it's more likely that you could have an accident on your hands and burn through it. So with this strategy is we heat up the end of the rod, we put a little flux on it, we heat up the work area, we melt the flux onto the work area, and we keep heating it until we see that flux go clear, and then it will, first. at first the flux will cover the hole, and then it will open up. And once it opens up, then it's time for me to start applying rod, and I just keep my heat on it until I get my rod melted, and then I back off, that's it. It's at a low enough temperature that as long as I don't do anything stupid, I should be able to do it just fine. I've done lots of aluminum cans. Um, it's all about heat control like most things, and uh, I've used a lot of different aluminum rods over the years, and this is the one that I've been the most successful with. All right, another thing to keep in mind, so we've got our aracetylene torch. A lot of guys have asked me about this as they've watched these videos. I really like both. I've used oxyacetylene my whole career, um, aracetylene is great because it's so simple. You don't have to think about it when you light it. You just open it up and you hit the self-lighting. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, and this is a mistake that guys make, you wanna make sure that this is really snapped in and you don't really wanna modulate the heat. You modulate the heat by choosing the tip more than anything else. So I see a lot of guys trying to modulate the heat. You can burn back down into the tip and then that becomes dangerous. So you just make sure that it's in place. You open it up and now we're, we're cooking with gas as they say. So the first thing that I do is I heat up the tip just a little bit and then I get some of my flux here. You can see 
I've got flux. Now I'm gonna heat the, heat the area just a little bit. And now the flux is gonna run into the hole. All right, so now the hole, now if you look at the hole, the hole is covered up. The hole is completely covered up with flux currently. So now I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to melt that flux. And now I'm not gonna back back off until I get it done. And you can see the fins are starting to melt away a little bit. That's okay. We're just opened up a little bit. Now I'm, now I'm melting my rod onto the work area. I've got all the rod I need now. I'm gonna add a little bit more flux to it. I'm not quite happy with my work there at the bottom, and that's okay. I'm gonna add a little bit more. All right, so we've been flowing nitrogen this whole time. Come on in and take a look. Now we've got a decent sized hole in the fins here, and a lot of people would say, why would you ever do that? But in a lot of cases, I've gotta get this coil sealed in order to get somebody air conditioning, especially true in commercial applications. In residential applications, you would do it again to get somebody through the night, that sort of thing. Um, but a more practical application would be if you had a rub out on a U-bend or on one of these tubes, and I'll show you that as well right now. But you can certainly do it in a coil like this. We're gonna pressure test both and bubble it here in a little bit so that you can see um, the effect of that and make sure that it is holding under 500 PSI of nitrogen. But now we're gonna go ahead and make a hole on one of these U-bends. All right, so you do need to, once it cools off, you need to clean it off with a little bit of water. I've got a little tub of water here and a, and a brush. And uh, that certainly isn't pretty, but you can see how it's an exact color match for the aluminum. And it definitely covered that hole. And like I said, we'll pressure test it. Inside of a coil, it's never gonna be a pretty patch. It's just sort of a nature of the beast, but I'll show you what it looks like on a rub out here. The first thing to know is I made this hole with an awl. And so an awl is gonna push material into that U-bend. If I were to cut this open, you would see that material going in. But one nice thing about this solder is it does kind of make a nice even patch on the top. It doesn't pull in and get into the joint, which is important if you're trying to patch a rub out. A lot of people would say it's better to cut that part out and start over. On a U-bend on aluminum coil, that's not really practical. So this is really a great option for that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my torch. Again, I'm using a turbo torch. It's gonna heat up the rod. Again, you can use oxacetylene, just use a small flame. Heat up the rod, get a nice bit of flux. Heat up the base material. Again, this hasn't been pre-cleaned. Put the flux on it until it melts into the hole. Now I'm gonna keep the heat on it and that hole's gonna open up and the flux is gonna go clear. Once that goes clear, then I know it's okay for me to start applying my rod. And it's gonna go on like a little glob. I don't need to move my rod all around. It's gonna go on in a little glob. I can back it up a little bit. There we go. And now I just keep it on there until it smooths out and I get a nice finished piece. There we go, that's it. If you look right here, you're gonna notice the color looks kinda of weird and that throws a lot of guys off. It gets, and even when it uh, cools off, it turns whitish. But once you clean that off, you'll notice that it's underneath, it's the exact same color as the base material. So you really can't distinguish what is the solder and what is the base material. And you do need to clean it off with a little bit of water and a wire brush like I'm doing here um, because that flux is slightly corrosive and it can eat it up. If you wanna get real fancy and you wanna make it look real pretty, you can take a wire brush and work it. But I've done a whole bunch of these. You can grind this stuff. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just as strong as the base metal, if not stronger. And it makes an amazing, amazing bond. So there you have it. Now all we gotta do is pressurize it up and I'll show you that it holds pressure with a little bit of big blue. All right, so there you have it. Now we just gotta put it under a little bit of pressure and test it with some soap bubbles so I can show you for sure that everything held up. All right, so you see we've got it set in 500 PSI. Take a little bit of big blue. See, we got no, no bubbles at all. Nice seal down here. Take a look at this one real close. And that is at 500 PSI. And you can see we worked really close to the factory joints, which is also great with alloy salt. Because of the low melting temperature, you're not gonna compromise the factory joints as long as you're careful. Really, really works great. Does the job exactly like you would expect it to, and it looks beautiful when it's done. So that's it, soldering using alloy saw on an aluminum coil. We did kind of a quick and dirty repair on the inside of the coil, and then we also showed you how to do it on a U-bend with flowing nitrogen and then pressurizing afterwards and testing 
with Big Blue. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.